Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary, doing SmackDown-ish. And, oh, I guess you can call this the opening cage match edition. But, uh, hey, this opens up with Paul Levesque. He comes out and he does, you know, and this to a, a good in-ring call, good introduction there. Um, he hypes up the crowd, hasn't lost a verbal step at all. He talks about his match with The Rock 25 years ago in the first SmackDown. He announces the opening cage match of Cody Rhodes and Solo Sokoa. And then Solo makes his entrance. Commentary does a good job at the history lesson for people like me who hadn't seen any of what they were talking about. Uh, this like going back a few years ago and whatnot. So they, they, you know, they did a good job with that. Um, Cody comes out, epic gear as usual, you know, and I love Cody's gear. I really do. Um, he, he, he never fails to impress. Um, but in the ring, Solo looked like a murderer waiting for a random moment to strike. I mean, he he looks ready. That's what, that's, that's what I see. He, he's got that look I've been waiting for him to have for a while. So, we get to our match. Solo Sokoa versus Cody Rhodes. WWE uh, undisputed title match. And this traditional rules, pin, submission, escape via over the top, through the door, uh, which they did a good job with that. And you know what? Mm, I, I'm, I'm going to say this in the beginning because I'm going to forget it if I don't. They did a great job at pacing the gimmicks of the match. They did a great job at pacing. They didn't overdo it. They didn't underdo it. They did it when it made sense. It was a little comical, a little pesky, a little funny, but um, all in all, right spot. Um, so they're both blocked being thrown into the cage, which aids in the fans knowing the cage is the weapon. They just got educated. So after Solo eats a face crusher, he just no-sold it. Um, if I saw you hear me say he ate something or somebody ate something, that means they no-sold it. Um, Cody introduces him into the cage a few times, and the crowd is popping on that. Solo does the same with heavier hitting throws. Cody is busted open, and it could be argued that the flying headbutt in the Tree of Woe did it. Could be. Good spot where Solo catches Cody from the disaster kick, power bombs into the cage, and then again, dumping him. Cody slid down like a wet corpse. It was good. Cody hit a lunging H crusher from the middle of the cage, but I think he had too much momentum as he half flew past Solo on the capture part of it. It almost looked like they just spun out. They battled up top with Solo losing, losing out and pulling Cody back in with an awkward suplex that ended as a half brain buster. And commentary tried to sell it as a brain buster, but no, nah, that... The fall was awkward. It, it was a little scary. Um, after they recover enough, Solo covers for a two count, which was smart. Brilliant, to be honest. Uh, Solo does really good. It's a really good 180 degree or 180 Sambo slam, but it was only for a two count. He, do, he does that so damn well. I like that. Um, Cody, maybe that should be one of his finishes, you know, that Sambo slam. He needs to get more of a repertoire and whatnot because I love the way he does it. Um, Cody blocks the Samoan Spike, goes into a flurry of his signature moves only for a two count. Solo goes up top and instructs the ref to tell Cody to turn over because Cody was just laying there. And he had to tell the ref, the ref had he goes in and tells Cody. To me, it was blatant. Um, but he hit the splash, it was for a two count. Solo hit a corner uh, hip attack. Cody pushes open the door. That's one of those areas. Because Solo did that run hip attack, hit Cody, and he's boasting with his back to him. Cody just nudges the door open and slowly, and the crowd pops. I wish the crowd just would have been like, okay, we got your back, man. We're not going to say anything. <laughs> you know, they popped. And, that, and, he, and then that's what Solo turns around. They popped. He, he uses the, the, the crowd to turn around, he catches them and stuff. But I thought that was really smart. Cody hits his finish for a two count. It's for a belt. It's a cage match. Kicking out is warranted. Cody recovers first, climbs the 
uh, furthest corner on the cage. He could drop down, but he does a super diving crossbody for a two count. And commentary did well, saying that was probably a wasted opportunity and whatnot. And you can know, like, drop down, what are you doing? Uh, the commentary is into it like a fan should be, which is probably where the fans at home are watching probably were. And so that's good. Cody tries to escape through the door, and Solo slams the door on him. That was the second, and I think uh, last time. Solo misses the spike. Cody hits the finish, retains the belt. It was that simple. It was... You're not going to get a five-star match in the cage opening show SmackDown. That's not going to happen. In truth, this is about a three-star match. This literally went as expected, as it should. If you're going on a four-star rating, then this would be a two. This went as it should. And so it, it, was, it was right on. It was brilliant. Did just right. Not too much. Certainly not too little. Everyone did what they had to do. But after the match, Cody boasts and says, that's it. We're done. And I was like, okay, in my mind, I was like, this is signaling something else. So the bloodline surrounds the cage, climbs in with Cody distracted. Solo hit the Samoan spike. Then they all beat down Cody with Tama calling the shots. Jacob hits the BME and then climbs to the top of the cage. Music hits. Rain walks to the ring. He enters the ring and then pulls a Sonny from the Bronx tail. He shuts the door. He shuts the cage door. And if anyone's seen the Bronx Tale, it is an epic scene. It's a boss move. A Bronx Tale. Watch that. Lots of good stuff in that. Lessons learned. Great, great moments. It's, it's just good. It's just good all around. I could watch it right now. Um, but Roman, he dispatches with the bloodline with ease. But Solo hits him from behind. Jacob called... Uh, yeah, Roman calls Jacob in after he gets his stuff back. And it's a Titan level showdown. Jacob is okay. But then Jacob hypes up. Solo pulls his enforcer from the ring. Smart for business. Because you do not need those two locking up, but you need to tease the fans that it's a thing. It, we, go, we might get to it. So they're doing they're doing this right. Uh, Gorillas of Destiny beat down Roman and Cody saves him with the two rivals ruining the day of G.O.D. Roman and Cody face off while the Ula Fala Lay is adorned on Solo. Okay. <clears throat> so, what's uh, Nick Aldis? He lets everybody know that Roman wants Jacob in a match and pulls a Vito Colleone saying, hey, this is an offer he can't refuse. Um, you know, and it, is, it, it was what it was, you know. And I'm, I was like, you know, I'm curious, you know. So you got Meechin, um, and she's going against, uh, what was it, Piper Niven. I just put P.N., <laughs> Um, it's a short match, which was done smart. Michi wins with Gail Kim's move for the pin. She calls Meat defeat. Chelsea attacks Michi and hits her finish on the trash can. Now, I had to note that Michi didn't try to match power or anything of the sort. It was a basic. It, it was basic judo where she used her opponent as leverage against herself. That's what she did against Piper. Michi used Piper's ascent to the corner to trap her and hit a backdrop before the finish. It was well. I thought that was good. Because I was like, well, this is about to be boring. But no, they did it right. Short, sweet, but it makes them look kind of like a powerful beast. You know, someone super strong. In any case, we get to A-Town Down Under versus Kevin Owens and the mystery partner. And... <laughs> This guy with back and body hair come out, and, and they, you know, Kevin's like, 
who are you? He's like, Ricky. He's like, he's Ricky, and he's my partner. And, oh, my goodness. Kevin Partners couldn't make it, but the fans, they got behind Ricky. That's what you call a rub. But it's false pretenses. Because after a stunner, he makes room for his tag partner, Randy Orton. So right now we know that the draft is meaningless when it comes to certain people. So they face, uh, the faces start off hot, but before the break, they lose ground. A-Town beats down Kevin and then cuts the ring off. They try to superplex Kevin, but he fights off. They at least hit the double suplex. They keep Owens from Orton at all costs, and then Owens just rolls from the ring, runs around it, gets in, tags Randy, and then he's too weak to do anything after he just sprinted around the ring. I'm sure Kevin can't wait to go to AEW. Randy ruins the night of A of A Town down for a while. They hit double green killer on uh, or the middle rope hung DDT. Then they do Randy's Matt Bows and they hit their finishes with Randy getting the pin. Standard match. I don't even know why they made that match. I don't I can't even see the point. They're doing some rivalry with a team that's never gonna beat Randy and Kevin. I don't you know, unless they epically cheat and pin Kevin Owens. Because it ain't gonna be Randy. So Nick Aldis explains that Roman wants a tag match at the up and coming Bad Blood. I was like, what kind of WCW pay-per-view? He and Cody uh, against Solo and Jacob. The Bloodline sign signed it without reading it, as he says. Cody enters and says he's done with the Bloodline and that the Roman Reigns problem. The fans boo Cody, who walks out of the room leaving Aldis and say that he has to talk to Roman. And... Yeah, see, I, this next one reminds me of why I call it SmackDown-ish because I'm not doing this again. Nia Jax goes to the ring, cut a slow, seemingly rehearsed promo to a crowd that shouts, what? Bailey comes out and she talks to Nia but about who needs help winning the belt. Tiffany comes out and talks mean girl and Jax catches uh, onto Bailey's ploy and threatens to beat her down. Then Naomi comes out and this is just not interesting. At least Bailey and Naomi spoke normally instead of someone trying to not stutter. Anyway. Uh, this is, it, look. How can I say this? Rest in peace, you know, to, uh, to James Earl Jones, but uh, Nia Jax and others, when this sounds rehearsed, they try to talk like him because they have a lot to remember. So they have to speak slowly so they can get everything that they read out. That's what they do. James Earl Jones had a stutter and he learned to speak like that to, to more or less kill that stutter. So, tag match made for next week. Baby faces that lose the match will leave SmackDown permanently. Hold up. The baby face, because they said the one that loses. While, while if the baby faces win, they get a shot at, the one that wins get a shot at the women's title. Tiffany tries to attack Naomi, who stops her with a jumping hip attack. Yeah, okay. So now we get Andrade versus Carmelo Hayes. I would have normally skipped this, but it's match five in the series. It's also training for Carmelo. So Andrade saved Carmelo from looking stupid. Andrade reversed the Irish whip and Carmelo hopped mid-rope to do a springboard move, but he started toppling over the top rope and Andrade saw it and dashed over there and pushed him over as fast as he could. So, okay. So they did a nice reset. They did the move outside the ring this time, rebounding off the barricade, but 
he missed the clothesline or crossbody, whichever Hayes was going for. So then now they're both on the barricade, and then they Spanish fly each other for the commercial break. Andrade missed the faint kick into the elbow, but a little bit later, he nails it, and it should have ended the match. And look, if they when they look back at it, they might think, yeah, that probably should have been it. Because um, that looked like a straight-up knockout injury blow. It just looked so devastating. I, I just Maybe the camera cut at the right spot. I don't know. Don't even care. To me, it looked like a nasty, wicked strike. They did the destroyer, but Hayes had to bat body drop Andrade to make the move look not so horrible. So, I saved you. Andrade hit, oh, and that won't even the finish. Andrade hit a double knee strike in the corner, and Hayes grabs the ropes for a break, for a, to break the count. Um, Hayes does well by hitting Andrade in the back, make it you know because Andrade was taking forever to get up, so Hayes was just kind of hitting him and stuff like no dead air, you know that's that's the idea of wrestling. Honestly, it's like if there's gonna be dead air or no motion. Make sure both have laid out after a move, but even then kind of roll over and ride and then give it about 10 to 20 seconds, 10 really, and then start trying to get up. Anyway, after a good battle on, in, in the corner, Andrade hit the super corkscrew butterfly suplex, scored the pin. LA Knight comes out to his thing, congratulates Andrade on uh, the best of five wins and then cuts a promo on him. For being the one to win, they hit it and quit it. Sweepstakes, thought it was good. LA Knight never failed to deliver. Then we get to our main event. The main event of the evening. So, okay. It's talking. Sort of. So, Roman Reigns comes to the... Come, hold on. <clears throat> Roman Reigns comes out to his kingdom that has come. I must say, before I stop watching WWE, no one had the crowd like this. Hulkamania, while everyone, it was just mad popular. And I, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is different. This is leagues above what Hulk Hogan did. Because Roman's merch sells better. There's more people to buy it. All kinds of stuff. And there are people that buy it two and three times. But Hogan would enter an arena. And the crowd, you know, it would be loud. and what? Okay. And you would see a spattering. Not a lot of Hulkamania. It's different you know, when it comes to the t-shirts and stuff. It's different when you walk in. And when you show up, you walk in. The fans bow their head with a finger to the damn air. That is next level right there. Over 90% of the building hails the original tribal chief. How Roman can keep it together under that is amazing in of itself. I don't know how I'd be. I don't know if I'd be in tears. I don't know if I would laugh. I don't I don't know. Because I'm going to tell you how I might have broke Shaniqua's debut on SmackDown. When she came out, the crowd erupted. And she just, woo! And she just had to laugh like, oh my God, this is happening. She broke. She broke quick. All this begins his spill and Roman steps up with his hand out for the mic. Then he has to do it again. And then he gains it. And he cut a promo. Some things change, but I don't. I don't need all this. I don't need this contract. I don't need Cody Rhodes. Now, he doesn't say, I don't need the fans. A heel would say that quickly. Roman claims ownership over everything from the ring to the WWE itself. Now, I remember seeing something back in the day uh, a few years ago when I decided to check out a clip or something. He was trying to do that in the fans. Boo. Acknowledge me. Boo. And this was after they, his, how much they hated him as a babyface, and then he turned heel. So it's like, you're going to be booed, you might as well match it. Cody's theme plays, and he comes out. And this could, this could take him on the path to being a heel. 
The fans are silent. Cody comes out and the fans are silent to see what path he takes. This lets me know that Roman can do no wrong at this juncture and it's all in Cody's hands. This is not, go back and watch, go back and listen. This is not dueling chance. It's a mix of OTC and Cody. It's not OTC, Cody. OTC. No, 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 no. They said at the same time, that, that is a split crowd. That's a split crowd. That was the perfect example, display, demonstration of a split crowd. Cody says it hasn't been Roman's WWE since WrestleMania. And then the mics hit the mat. The fans don't want them to fight. Just, it ain't no letting them fight. It ain't no cheers. It, no, no they, the fans don't want this. That's speaking volumes. Solo and Jacob make their entrance. G.O.D. attack from behind, get beat down, and then get beat down for their efforts. Tama took down Roman and got up way too soon, having to stall until Roman can get up, Sambo slam him. And Tama made that look real good. Then Roman signs the contract to a cheer. Solo tries to get in Roman's head, you know, from the aisle and He's like, he don't like you, he don't like you, he don't respect you, and all this he kept saying, and then Cody holds out his hand like Roman did earlier. Roman gives him the contract, Cody signs it, and this is not to Roman's delight, because Roman don't want to have anything to do with it. I'm liking this. I'm, I'm liking where they're going with this, and it's Zemo, it's still like what we were saying, man. You know, hey, Randy and them, they done split off to do their own thing. You know, Roman has nobody. Cody has nobody. They're beating them down. Now they're joining. I didn't see that happening. But I'm thinking that Cody and Roman are going to work well tentatively. It's almost like the mega powers. That's what I'm thinking. Until Roman gains his own. And when o Roman gains his own, well, you know, Cody's going to go bye-bye like Sami Zayn, except Cody won't be mid-card. He's going to stay top card. That's what I'm thinking. You know, what, what do y'all think? And yeah, I, there's a month old, there's two month old by Tyle Jones that I'm going to read probably later on today or something it's just I was wondering if I should if I shouldn't I'm sick I'm trying to recover it's slow it's a dreary day it's th things is happening everybody things is happening so I'm still gonna try to read those later today. I just want to do that with Cedra um, and with that this has been Central for CR Wrestling Commentary on Friday Night Smackdown-ish and we want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe so we can do what? See you next time.